Hello, my name is Tara Lise, and this is my presentation for my pop culture and media class. In 1999, once the darling of the technology world with 80 million registered users, the revolutionary software allowed people to use the internet to do what they had done for years in neighborhoods, schoolyards, and concert venues. They swapped music. Within months of its release, Napster was the internet's killer app. Napster was the first mainstream peer-to-peer -peer technology and a giant wake-up call for the music industry, particularly record labels, who had not come to terms with the impact the net would have on their business models. In a few months, Napster exploded beyond the university campus and was being used by 85 million people around the world with a billion searches for music every day. For the music industry, Napster represented the gravest possible threat to music and to the business model that had served it so well for almost 50 years. Gary Sherman, president of the Recording Industry Association of America, said, When Napster came along, it was now a situation where everything, anything that anybody had ever recorded, would now be available online for people to take for free. It was a real game changer. Although the music industry was the first to feel the effects of digital media, the ability to transform information into data and transfer it quickly over the internet has changed long-standing business models in more than the recording industry. Movie studios, book publishers, TV producers, video game makers, and even newspapers any business that makes its money from the creation of intellectual content has been dragged kicking and screaming into a new reality, one many of them and still are unprepared to deal with. Today we buy our music online, we download movies on demand, and read newspaper stories on our cell phones. Meanwhile, the legal systems around the world struggle to adjust to the ever-changing nuances of what exactly it is to share, successfully closing some services and sites, suing thousands of average customers, and convincing ISPs to hand over personal data about their customers. And yet file sharing seems to grow stronger year after year. What is left of Napster today? Well, it still exists, though you have to pay for it. So what's the point? Its legacy is what's important. Sean Fanning's name may not be memorable, but funny enough, Sean Parker's is, thanks to his recent portrayal by Justin Timberlake in The Social Network. Peer-to-peer -peer music sharing is still a thriving business, although sites like Pirates Bay are constantly in threat of being shut down. And according to Drew Grant for Salon.com, he thinks... It's actually YouTube that carries the torch of what I consider Napster's original sentiment. I totally agree with him about YouTube. Lastly, Sean Fanning said this, I always looked at Napster as a technological success and product success. The business side and legal side were failures, but the other two were widely successful. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I will leave you with this. What would have happened to the music industry if Napster had not emerged? Would we now have Rhapsody, Spotify, iTunes, or Last.fm? We would never know. Thank you.